Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to be looking at some of the anatomy of matrices that allows us to use row operations to find solutions. Here we've got a system of linear equations, and the augmented matrix that represents this linear system is below it. If you're a normal human, it's pretty difficult to look at this system and be able to tell what the solution is. And if you think about our goal when we do elimination on a system of equations, it's to get something that looks a bit more like this here where we can solve x3 very simply, we can then back substitute to the equation above and find x2, then use both of those to finally back substitute again and find x1. So in terms of augmented matrices, something that looks more like this one below is friendlier for finding solutions. Of course, if we imagine what a system looks like when all the work has been done for us and we only need to read the solution, then this one on the right here is the best case scenario and thinking about what its augmented matrix would be starts to give us a clearer picture of what a helpful matrix looks like when solving a system. In both of these augmented matrices, you can almost see a staircase type of pattern of zeros in them. In one of them, the staircase pattern of zeros seems to be in the bottom part of the matrix, and in the other, there seems to be a staircase both on the bottom and the top sections. And these are known as echelon forms in linear algebra. For a matrix to be an echelon form, it needs to have a few things that are true about it. The first one being that what we call the leading entry of any row is in a column to the right of the leading entry of the row above it. What we mean by a leading entry is just simply the first entry in any row that is not zero. So here you can see I've marked each leading entry in all of my example matrices. And you'll notice that each leading entry in any of these matrices is located to the right of any other leading entry above it in that same matrix. Here this one is to the right of this four above it. In the next matrix, you can see the leading entry of the bottom row is farther to the right than the one above, which is farther to the right than the one above it. Looking at this last matrix here, you'll notice that it's certainly possible we don't have a leading entry in each column. You can see that this leading entry of one is definitely located to the right of leading entry two above, but it doesn't have to be immediately to the right of it, just to the right somewhere. Keep in mind that it's also possible for a row not to have a leading entry. If we look at the last row of this matrix on the right, it contains all zeros. And remember that leading entries need to be non-zero, so there's no leading entry in this row here. The next rule for a matrix to be in echelon form, all entries below a leading entry must be zeros. Here you can see that below my four, I have a zero. This leading entry of 1 is at the bottom of a matrix, so there's not really anything below it that's required to be 0. You can see a similar pattern in these other matrices where any leading entry has all zeros below it in its column. And the third thing that we need to be true for a matrix to be in echelon form, any row containing all zeros must be located at the bottom of the matrix. So here on the right, we've got a row of all zeros, and it's located at the bottom of this matrix. If you were to have multiple rows that are all zeros, then they all need to be at the bottom of the matrix, below any rows that have a non-zero entry. So this has a 1 and a 2. It should be above any row in this matrix that has all zeros. These three things, if true, give us our lower staircase of zeros look to our matrix and mean the matrix is in echelon form. Another more particular type of echelon form is the reduced echelon form. For this one, it needs to be in the regular echelon form, meaning we have all those lower stair requirements from the previous already met, but there are two additional things we need for this one. Any leading entry in a matrix needs to have a value of 1, you can see that each of these leading entries in any row is 1. And now also we need all entries above and below a leading entry to have a value of 0. If our matrix is in an echelon form, then our leading entries are often referred to as pivot positions. And in reduced echelon form, like here, all of the leading ones are pivot positions. Any column that contains a pivot position is just then called a pivot column. So here you can see we've marked each column that's a pivot column with an arrow, and any column that doesn't contain a pivot position we've marked with an X, and those are not pivot columns. 
One final difference we'll mention about these forms in this video is that the reduced echelon form of a matrix is unique, but just the plain echelon form of a matrix is not unique. So if you and I both have the same system in its reduced echelon form written down on separate pieces of paper, then we know we're both working off of the exact same matrix. But if we both only have our same system in echelon form, we might be working off of different things on our piece of paper. We'll give you an example here. On the left, I might have my system in this matrix form, and it's in echelon form. But maybe you prefer to reduce the second and third rows by a factor of negative three, since you see a common multiple there. We both have an equivalent system in echelon form, but it's not the same matrix. One last little note on echelon forms. Some books or instructors for linear algebra state that you must make your leading entries a value of one for the matrix to be in echelon form. Other texts and instructors do not specify this. So just be aware if you're in a situation where this is an additional requirement that's present. Now that we know about pivots and echelon forms, of course the next question is how do we turn our matrix into one of these forms? And our next videos in our linear algebra series on elementary row operations and the row reduction algorithm tell us exactly that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.